Before Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, Jesus attempted to prepare the twelve and his closest disciples that there was to be very serious repercussions to this day with this triumphal entry. Three times in Mark's Gospel between chapter 8 and 10, incidentally also in Matthew and Luke's Gospels, Jesus predicts his death and the disciples fail to understand or to respond appropriately. And so Jesus wants to teach them about discipleship. It kind of reminds me back to when I was ordained, maybe just a little bit more than five years. I was assigned to an ethnic parish for the first time. And my very first Palm Sunday in this parish, we had read the Passion, the Palm was distributed. The people were coming out of church. And this little elderly woman comes up with a handful of Palm and she begins to beat me. And I must say, she was hitting me pretty hard. And she is speaking in her native tongue every time she hit me. And I was at a loss. And finally, I just reached up and I grabbed the palm and I picked it out of her hand. And I said, why are you hitting me? At which point then, she began to cry. And her son, who was still in the church, came out and said, what did you do to my mother? And I explained, and then they finally explained to me that it was an Eastern European custom that on Palm Sunday with the palm as you exited church, you lightly tap the priest on the shoulder with the palm. Unfortunately, this little old lady wasn't exactly that gentle. But it was a terrible misunderstanding of a custom that I was unfamiliar with. In these three predictions of Jesus' passion that occurred as they journeyed up to Jerusalem, They fail to understand what discipleship is all about. And I wonder if you and I truly understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Certainly, when the sun is out and everything is fine, there's no problem. But when things get bad, we kind of become challenged. We wonder why we doubt. We have our fears. And it's all because we don't understand. In the first occurs, the prediction came after Jesus performed the multiplication of loaves. Could you imagine being a bystander, one of the crowd, one of the twelve? Seven loaves of bread fell to fed thousands. The wonder, the awe. It also followed after two healings. Jesus performed two miracles. Jesus, in a quiet moment with the twelve, says, Who do people say I am? He wants to hear from them what they have heard. What's the scuttlebutt? How well do they understand? And we know that the twelve say, Well, some say you're Elijah, and some say you're the great prophet, and some say you're this. And Peter says, You are the Messiah the Son of God. And you can see Jesus being, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for no mere man has revealed this to you. You can see Peter kind of fluffing himself up, feeling pretty good about himself. He got an A. Everybody else got an F. Then Jesus begins to 
say, if you wish to be my follower, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, and give yourself up to God. And all of a sudden, Peter's means changes very quickly. God forbid, Master, anything like this should happen to you. And Jesus gets angry. And he says, get behind me, you Satan. My mission to the Father is hard enough without you telling me, God forbid that it happened. Jesus' rebuke of Peter and the other apostles, it really becomes a, a teaching moment for Jesus on those conditions of discipleship. And in other words, if you wish to follow Jesus, you must be humble. Not lording your greatness over another, not bragging about what you have and what, you know, others don't. You need to be kind. And you also need to be obedient. Obedient the fact that if you love me, you're going to be true to me. Not obedience as in, if you do wrong, mommy's going to punish you, you're going to go to your room without any supper. But to be obedient out of love. As we go through once again this coronavirus pandemic, it's the story of a nurse that volunteers to take the patient with coronavirus. So another sister nurse doesn't have to do so. Obedient love. This person needs my care. This person needs my attention. And why I'm scared for myself and those I love. This is what I am called to do. And so in this first prediction of the Passion, Jesus reminds the apostles, what are they called to do? To be followers of Jesus Christ and how to do it. And by being humble and being obedient to the Father's will, they will be able to Form miracles through love and grace. They won't be remembered for their words, but they'll be remembered for their deeds. The second prediction of Christ's passion comes on the, the throes of Jesus casting out a demon. But the problem with this is. Jesus was all praying. And the twelve said, well, if Jesus can do it and we're his followers, why can't we do it? And by the time Jesus shows up on the scene, the apostles have made quite a mess. This poor boy has been running away and people have been catching him. He fell into the fire. It's just an utter, utter mess. And Jesus, seeing what happens, takes charge of the situation and expels the demon. The boy's father is ecstatic. The people are happy. They walk away to celebrate. And once again, the twelve are there looking at their toes. And finally, one of them says, Master, what did we do wrong? You told us you gave us the power. You told us we could do this. And Jesus reminds them, power means nothing without prayer. How many times do we embark on a new adventure? 
for something that's scary and we don't take the time to pray to put it in the hands of God some of us that went off to Catholic colleges might remember our lecturers beginning class with a prayer direct O Lord our every action so what begins in you, ends in you, and may it be happily ended. The second les lesson to discipleship is prayer. It's one thing to take on the world and be superman or superhuman or superwoman and feel invigorated to do this. But if we don't take the time to refill the pitcher with that cool, refreshing water. Eventually, we give empty that pitcher to cool other people, and now we ourselves are parched. Discipleship means we take the time to pray. And once again, with this pandemic, are we taking time to pray? The final prediction of Christ's passion explodes with the ambition of the sons of thunder, James and John. Mark's version isn't sugar-coated like Matthew's where mom comes and says, hey Jesus, would you make an old lady happy and you know, give my sons a seat at your right and your left. But in Mark's gospel, James and John come with their own sinful pride, their blind ambition, and just say, Jesus, this is what we want to do. Jesus teaches them and their brother disciples were now very resentful and very P.O. at James and John. That if they wish to model anybody's behavior, they need to model Jesus. We don't model ourselves after some superhero or some glamorous person. But we recall the Philippians hymn. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, obediently accepting God and doing what God wanted. So as we begin this Holy Week with this Palm Sunday ceremony, how do we fully engage in the mysteries of Holy Week in the midst of this pandemic? Because how am I going to go to church? How am I going to get my palm? Maybe we need to reflect upon how do we examine our call to discipleship? As we thought that we would line the streets to welcome Jesus with our palm branches held high, do we now carry with us the sorrow of the world? Sixty-six thousand people have died. Or I'm sorry, sixty-six thousand people have the COVID-19 virus in New York City alone, in New York. Last week at this time, we had two cases here in Schuylkill County. We now have 30. So how do I live my discipleship in this great sorrow of the world? where so many people are suffering, so many people are dying, and 
People are going hungry. And people are unemployed. Can we relate our suffering right now? I don't want to be socially isolated. I don't want to socially distance myself. I don't want to be quarantined. Think of the poor people in intensive care units right now on respirators fighting for their life. Think of their loved ones. Think of all those people that went nuts at the supermarkets, hoarding, thinking about me, not others. My experience is right now of my discipleship. Does it model Christ's? Or does it model the false accusations and the denials and the betrayals and the beatings that Jesus faced? They were heartbreaking because people denied Jesus for what he came to bring the world. It's kind of hard sitting at home. I hope that our going viral and putting these masks on YouTube at least helps you, comfort you. But I also hope they challenge you to look at yourself. Because there's nowhere else to go. There's nobody to associate with. What brings the greatest sorrow in your life? That's a good question to ponder. What brings you your greatest sorrow? And how well do you bear that burden? In a couple days we're going to hear what we heard in the Passion today. Jesus carrying the burden of our sins on the cross. But how well do you bear your burden? And in what ways does Jesus' passion speak to you about your sorrow? What injustice has incurred in your life and in the world that stirs the most passion in you? Why does it? How do you respond to it? What can you do to rectify it? In your own very simple way, how can you make it better? Unlike Jesus, who spent much of his last hours on earth in prayer, many of us forget to pray in the midst of a crisis. And we fail to realize the important role that prayer plays for each of us in our hour of need. And right now, the world needs to pray. And we as a universal church need to bring our one voice together with all the millions of other Catholic voices throughout the world to make a loud rumble to heaven. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Lord, we need you now. This is what Jesus did this week, beginning with this day. He offered himself completely for you, for me, in humble obedience, in love, with no sense of prideful ambition, but in simplicity of heart. Am I willing to do the same for other people? No strings attached that Jesus began for us on this day. 
We all need to understand what it's all about. And every one of us is called to a different sense of discipleship. Let's not misunderstand it. Let's not misinterpret it. Because God needs us to be his arms and his legs, his hands and his feet, his eyes and his ears and his mouth. Because the world is crying out in torment and pain. May we be the instruments of God's peace. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. We God not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he came down. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is his Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With confidence, let us bring our needs and petitions to our Almighty Father. For the Church, as we begin our solemn remembrance of the events of our salvation, may God grant us a spirit of humility and devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repentance and conversion of all hearts that have turned away from the Lord, and for the salvation of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with their faith, by God's grace, may they be renewed in faith and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will be reborn in the waters of baptism this coming Easter, may Christ's renewing power change their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, May they come to share in the fullness of eternal life in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, as we recall and give thanks for the Paschal mystery, we ask that you hear the prayers we offer today through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. That the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we do acclaim.
St. Agatha, the patron saint of nurses, with St. Michael, the defender from all evil, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him,
Nourish with the sacred kiss, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have bought us the hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Seeking 